Hello Aquarius, welcome to Monarch Intuition and tonight I'm going to be doing your June 2022 monthly check-in reading for you. So I'm kind of feeling nervous doing your reading and I usually don't. Usually I have very quick cut and dry readings, but for some reason I just feel like, I don't know, maybe you're feeling the same way. Um, I usually don't do readings like this, but I've taken a break and I've walked away from this and every time I come back I feel the same type of way. Now, um, what is going on for the sign of Aquarius? What I have right here is I have the Anne Stokes Gothic Collection, and I'm going to pull one major arcana out of this stack to see the energy for you during this month. What's going on for Aquarius in June 2022? One more shuffle? Okay. We have the sun. So here's the thing about the sunlight energy. This represents illumination right here. I kind of feel like you were in the dark about something within your life, and now you're gaining full clarity. You're gaining full clarity over this situation. Now, here's the thing about the sun. It illuminates really bad aspects of people right here. Things that you do not understand, things that you don't even see coming, okay? When the sun comes up, everything is exposed. Everything is exposed for what it was. Think of you being trapped in like the woods at night and you're by yourself. Everything kind of looks like it's scary. Everything kind of looks like it's going to eat you. You could be getting a little bit paranoid right here. But when the sun comes up, you're full of illumination. You see everything clearly and everything's not as scary, right? However, it also illuminates potential pitfalls. It illuminates, you know, deadly animals that may have crossed your path. So just because the sun comes up and it seems not so scary doesn't mean that there aren't dangers afoot for you. So what is going on for the sign of Aquarius? What do we need to know? I'm going to be using the Revelations Tarot right here. And this deck does have reversals, in case anyone is wondering. So what is going on for the sign of Aquarius? Some sort of illumination. But at the end of the day, the sun is like a relief card. You're no longer in the dark. And that's a good thing, right? We have the devil in reverse. You know, every single sign has pulled the devil, except like Taurus and I think Virgo. No, I think they pulled it too. So you have the queen of pentacles in reverse. You have the devil in reverse. And you have the Eight of Cups in reverse. This is you walking away from something that seems like a money pit right here. Like you're constantly putting money into this situation, but it's not leaving you emotionally happy. And this is you finally waking up to that and realizing, hey, I need to walk away from this. And it could be a person, place, or thing. I'm not going to say it's your relationship. I'm not going to say anything like that. But you're putting money into like a vice right here, whether it is video games, whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol, whatever. And it's leaving you emotionally unfulfilled. With this Queen of Pentacles, all of your hard-earned money, you're just kind of giving it into this situation. It's kind of like the prodigal son. You have money, you have fortune, you have wealth amassed or whatever. But every single time this thing comes up within your life, you keep throwing money into it. And it keeps chaining you down. And what I see for you is that you're starting to wake up and realize this. And you're walking away from that situation, okay? So let's clarify this double. Now, that could be a scary thing right there for you. That could be causing you the anxiety, you know, the fear of missing out. Every time someone brings up this subject or invites you to go do this thing, it makes you like, I want to do this. But then you have to realize, hey, that's not a good thing. It's like a vice for you. So what is this devil energy? What do we need to know? <clears throat> but I do see that you are actively giving to this situation. This is indulgence. And then the eight of cups is you walking away. You have the Four of Swords and you have the Justice card. So I kind of feel like you need to wake up from something, okay? You need to wake up to your life at this moment. Maybe you've been putting a lot of things off within your life. You haven't really, how can I say this without it being like, you know, just in your face, bold and blunt, I'm trying to be a little bit more tactful on my channel, okay? So... My cat's meowing. Imagine that you are losing a job, right? And you lost your job. And instead of going out and finding a new job, instead of doing anything else, you've just been like, hey, I'm going to work this small little part-time job over here. Oh, I'm going to, you know, buy this video game, whatever. You're not getting back on track within your life. The judgment is here to wake you up and adjudicate that situation for you, giving you that balance, okay? It's Libra energy. This is you finally waking up and saying, hey, I'm going nowhere fast because I'm constantly within this Four of Swords energy. The Four of Swords energy represents, hey, I'm just stuck doing the same thing every single day. Yes, it's peaceful, but at the same time, you have to understand, and the Four of Swords, it's very symbolic. The Four of Swords, he has the sword underneath the table right here. 
He can take this sword up at any time and go back into life. He can fight the battle again. He's at peace because he's resting. He's usually like an injured soldier, right? And he's had these three swords piercing his heart, representing his injury. Maybe he got injured and he has to recover. With the Justice card right here, this is Libra Energy. She has the sword that is pointed straight up. The same thing that would happen if he grabbed his sword and he pointed it straight up and he charged back into the battle, right? That's what I'm seeing for you right now is that you are finally realizing something about your life and you are cutting out these addictions to the devil, the things that make you asleep. So this could be alcohol, this could be video games, this could be anything within your life that's a vice for you. Anything that puts you in like this hazy mode where you're not quite living your life, you're doing it for other purposes. It's kind of like, you know, in the Bible when it says, because um, tarot is very, um, it's very religious. It's based off of Catholic belief systems, right? Also based off of Jewish belief systems. When, um, I can't remember who it was. He talks about the scales falling off of people's eyes and them seeing things for what they truly are. That's what the situation is. The scales are falling off of your eyes and you're saying, hey, this is bad. I need to change something about my life. I actually need to start doing something. I need to start moving forward. Whatever it was has just chained and trapped me. I thought I was having fun, but at the same time, it was keeping me in this like eternal bliss state, eternal peace. The four of pentacles with the two of pentacles. This is you holding on to your money right here. And you're bringing stability back into your life, okay? So with the Queen of Pentacles in reverse, she's constantly giving out her treasures to other people. But this is you holding on to your treasures because he looks like a miser right here. He's standing on his money. He has it in his hands. He's holding it very close to his heart. So that's what you need to do with your wealth right here is hold your wealth very close to your heart. And start investing in things that are actually going to bring you balance within your life right here. When we talk about bringing balance within your life, this is like, Hey, instead of going out and buying this, what I should do is I should invest in, you know, getting that new air conditioner for my car. Bringing back the stability to the things that are around you. For example, if you have a leaky faucet, fixing that leaky faucet. If you have a hole in your roof, fixing that hole in your roof. Fixing the things that are around you that bring you um, abundance, that make your life worth living, okay? The Eight of Cups walking away from something right here. Let's take a look at this. the Queen of Wands, and the Ace of Cups. You're walking away from the Eight of Cups to find the Ninth Cup. But at the same time, I want to clarify if you're walking away from this Queen of Wands energy or if you're going to this. Let me pull one more card for this. You're walking away from it, it looks like. Because you're realizing that it's glamorous, but it's not getting you anywhere, okay? So, for example... Some people put a lot of time into their self-image and their self-appearance, but it's not actually doing anything for them. The Queen of Wands is someone who wants to be exciting. She wants to like basically be one of those Harley Davidson girls. She wants to get on her bike. She wants to go to the bar. She wants to be, you know, sexually open, whatever. Now, at the same time, the Queen of Wands can represent positive traits about that. It represents a female who is very scholarly, who can make her own decision, who doesn't rely on anyone. So it has two different modes right here. And what you're realizing is that the negative traits of the Queen of Wands, you have to leave in the past, okay? You can no longer act like this, I'm too cool for school. And you have to walk to find your Ace of Cups, which is your Ninth Cup. Because what you're going to realize is that that energy of I'm too cool, I'm a punk, I'm rebellious, I'm doing whatever is not actually helping you. It's actually the thing that's keeping you stuck within the Four of Swords right here. Now, I'm not saying to agree with everything and go along with the crowd right here but it's definitely saying that hey you know you can damage yourself in other ways by you know going against the grain like if someone says hey you shouldn't drink but you drink every single night that's bad for you okay you shouldn't do this but you're going to do it anyway because whatever so i kind of feel like even with this ace of cups right here maybe that's something that you're turning down maybe that's that's your vice okay you have to realize that there's something that you need to walk away from. There's something much healthier that you can go to. You can still be this rebellious person, but remember, there are still a lot of rebellious people who are very powerful people, okay? They have their own companies. Think of like, I hate using him as an example, but like say Elon Musk, for example, he doesn't follow the way that things are supposed to be. A lot of people give him criticism because he says what's on his mind. But at the same time, he's super wealthy. He has his own business. He has his own things. It's very Queen of Wands energy, okay? And remember in tarot, the gender really doesn't matter because 
the Queen of Wands is Aries energy. So regardless if you're an Aries male or female, the card that represents you is the Tower, the Queen of Wands, the Emperor, and the Two, Three, and Four of Wands. So what else is going on? So the devil, yeah, definitely walking away from that. You're realizing something right here. You're realizing that there is a vice. I'm gonna actually show you this energy right here so that way you can look at it. The devil is a perversion of the card, the lovers. If it comes out, I will show you that. If it does not, feel free to look that up on Google. Just Google image the lovers tarot. And um, as you can see, there are chains right here around their neck, right? And that means that they're chained to the devil. They're chained to his vices right here. This is after they've taken the bite of the knowledge, good and evil fruit. They realize that they're naked. They realize that this world has been given to the devil and now they are basically enchained to that situation. They've handed over a perfect world to the devil and now he rules them. It's a different energy from the lover's energy, which is like it being blessed by God. It's basically the same artwork, but more happy. So this is you realizing that these vices are what keep you stuck. Now, if you look very closely, I have a bad camera. The chains that are around their neck are very loose. So it's not like a choker. It's basically just wrapped around right here. They can easily take them off and walk away. It's not even got a chain on it, like, or a lock on it. It's not like, you know, Jacob Marley and the Christmas story or the Christmas Carol, whatever the fuck that name is. But you could easily take this off. Now it's going to be kind of like a struggle because here's the thing. The devil does allow you to walk away from situations, but it doesn't mean that there won't be temptation along the way. Okay. That's the idea behind this. Even if you do walk away, it's still the devil's world. All right. That's what happened with the fall of man. And it even says in Revelation, it'll be handed over for a period of years, right? So you will always have this temptation, but it doesn't have to chain you down to that temptation. You're always going to feel something because you have to understand that within your chart, there is something called the black moon in your birth chart. If you don't know what your birth chart is, if you're not into astrology, I suggest go and look up your birth chart. Just type in uh, birth chart calculator. I use Cafe Astrology. It's one of the easiest ones for people. Um, but look that up. There is something called the black moon in Lilith. It's not actually a point in the sky. What it represents is just a spot in space that's very dark. It's black, right? That is your negative curse that's put upon you throughout your life, all right? So you have your sun, moon, and rising. Think of like Aurora and the three fairies. You know, the three fairies bless you with beauty, brains, talent, whatever. And then Maleficent comes along and curses you with something. And that is the curse that you are dragging around throughout your life. Everyone has a different curse, okay? Some people it's drugs. Some people it's alcohol. Some people it's sex. Some people have curses of all different natures put on them, all right? And you have to recognize what yours is and walk away from that situation, okay? We have the Six of Cups. We have the Page of Wands. We have the King of Swords. I feel like you're being a very good parent or a very good mentor to someone right here. Because the Six of Cups does represent, you know, you helping the younger generation right here. The Page of Wands could be apprenticed to this King of Swords. The King of Swords does represent you, so maybe you do have children. You are trying to train this situation, whatever it is within your life. You're looking at a new situation. How can you grow it better, okay? How can it be better than you were? Because that's what the apprentice is to the master. It's a slate of how to make this person be like you, but be better than you and pass that on and create, you know, evolution through humanity right here. But with the six of cups, this does represent that, you know, a loving energy because the brother is giving this cup to his sister because he wants her to be happy. He wants her to not understand what death is and sorrow and sadness. He wants her to just understand what it is to be a child. So I kind of see that you're protecting a situation right here as this king of swords to this page of wands. So I kind of feel like you have to get rid of this vice right here and cut it out of your life. That way you can have a more fulfilled life right now with this page of wands. Being able to also see the evil within a situation. I'm going to get one more card for this because I'm going to explain this 
Yeah. 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 You have to be aware right now, if you have children, if you have anyone who's like, you know, it could be anything. It doesn't always have to be kids. It could be like a small project, all right? Something that you are trying to build and grow. It could be a small business. It could be anything like that. The Page of Wands is someone who is like the topic of the town. This is, tarot can be a little bit weird at times because it does talk about the way time periods were during this, um, during this, like the 14th, 15th century, 13th, 14th and 15th century. Okay. So this kind of represents in a way, this person is new to a situation is being brought out to the town. And this is how they treated the girls and the boys whenever they needed to get, you know, apprentices for the church or concubines for the king, they bring everyone out. They'd be like you, you and you, we're going to dress you up. We're going to make you take a bath. We're going to present you to these famous people. And whoever selects you, that's who you're going to go and work for. Or if the king selects you, you're going to be his concubine. Like that's that, that is what the page of wands represents. Okay. You need to be aware of that. There is someone around you within your life who needs protection from this 10 of swords. Okay. 10 of swords represents a swift ending. All right. So you need to be aware of people, places, things around your life right here, small projects, children, whoever you have, and protect them with your wise energy, which is also Aquarius energy with the magician right here. That was like a very weird message that came out in this sequence right now, but that is the message for you, okay? Pay attention to anything that you are nurturing right here. This could be a friend who's younger than you, a child, a project that is very small that you're building into creation. Just understand it has a very delicate time and you need to protect it going through this stage. You need to make sure that you are on your A game. You need to pay attention and be very aware. You have to be very critical. Don't just trust people because you feel like they're good people because the King of Swords also represents um, a doctor, a judge, a lawyer, an attorney, someone who's very keen with his mind. So you being very sharp and very analytical and being able to see the lie within people right here, okay? The Four of Wands, the Ace of Pentacles, and the Star, which is good for your energy. Celebrate your life right here. It's okay if you've had fuck-ups. Everyone's had fuck-ups, right? I see with the Ace of Pentacles, a new business opportunity. That could definitely be the Page of Wands right there. Um, it could also represent your show business in a way. Someone wants to make someone a star and they're willing to pay you, right? Say that you have a child who someone says could be a star. Well, you have to still be very smart about what happens in Hollywood. Like that's that situation as well, right? Um, we're not, we can't be stupid on this channel. So what I'm seeing right here is that you could be celebrating with this situation, but understand that if you do this, there are always going to be devils that are around you that are trying to take advantage of whatever you're trying to create, especially if it's something that is a small project. Don't just give your ideas and thoughts to other people and don't just trust people based off of what you've heard about them actually see people's intentions and see what they're trying to do right here if you just blindly follow the leader everything could fall to shit be very skeptical and at the same time watch what's going on within your life watch who people are now at the same time if this has nothing to do with you just be prepared of any small project that you have I do see that you could bring about some sort of financial stability with the star because it also represents Aquarian energy. So I do feel like you have to create something. The star says to look at your birth chart because it does represent, um, it does represent astrology. Okay. The sun is a star. The star is a star, right? It's a different star from a different, uh, constellation. So what I'm seeing for you is that this is Leo energy. This is looking at your base ego and then this is looking at your energy, which is off further apart from the ego because remember Leo and Aquarius sit like this on the wheel. So Leo is opposed to Aquarius. However, at the same time, you both work in tandem with one another because if you don't have your physical self, if you're not taking care of your physical self, you can never attain your dreams within your life. And if you don't pay attention to your dreams, 
then you will have nothing, right? So Leo teaches you to look at your physical body and make sure that you're taking care of it. Make sure you're getting enough sleep, drinking that water, walking away from any addictions right here, right? And Aquarius is saying, okay, well, I need to see things from a greater perspective. I need to see things outside of myself. I need to see things outside of our universe. I know that our star isn't the only star. There are other stars, there are galaxies, there are other planets, there are other dimensions. That's what Aquarius rules. It rules the higher thought. Leo rules the ego, so yourself, right? So what I'm seeing for you is that you have a project that you can celebrate with. It allows you to attain your star. So definitely look at your birth chart right here and see what your 10th house is. Your 10th house usually rules your career, like what you're supposed to do. Maybe you have a really good idea, like write it down and then go through the process of getting a copyright, whatever it is. Maybe you have um, some sort of skills, then practice those skills. Maybe you're good at woodworking, whatever the situation is. I do see that you can make money to move on to your star, okay? but also be very aware of any sort of situations that are around here. Now, I want to clarify this magician energy. Why is the magician here? It also represents divine protection. Um, the magician is the grand astrologer, okay? The magician himself, which is your energy, you are ruled by the star and the magician, the king of swords, and the five, six, and seven of swords. What he does is he is a master of all magic, okay? He's not like us. We can say, oh, well, we practice witchcraft or this person's a scientist, whatever. The magician is not really a person. It is an ideology or a construct of not God, but something similar to that, okay? Like, say, the apprentice of God. That's kind of what the magician is. He's a master of every single thing in life. He's a master of necromancy. He's a master of pyromancy. He's a master of... Or herbalism, whatever, tarot, however you want to view magic, that's what he's a master of. And it doesn't always have to be magic. He could be a master of science as well. Maybe that's what you're trying to get. You could be trying to become a doctor in science. With this king of swords and this magician, this um, page of wands could also represent, you know, like a degree. You've got the first step of the degree. Now you want to become a master, but there are always pitfalls along the way. There are a lot of things that'll make you want to quit this. Okay. So Say you get your first degree, you're moving on to your master's. There are a lot of treacherous trials and tribulations that you're going to have to go through in order to get that, to or in order to become a doctor, because at the same time, the magician is also a doctor. Well, science and magic, two go hand in hand. The Ten of Pentacles. Okay. Be aware of everything within your surroundings right here, okay? Don't allow, because you're careless of a situation, for things to fall apart within your life. Protect that so in a way the magician is putting up like a barrier around his kingdom a barrier of energy because the ten of pentacles does represent having that happy stable home that stable life all right so i kind of see that's what you're trying to attain within your life it does require you to walk away from things it does require you know you to have these upsets but that's just life as long as you're walking away from the devil and you're rising up to a higher vibration within your life i think that's okay so let's see, like you have to take the bad with good in life. However, it doesn't mean that you always have to, you know, sink into this depressive state where you indulge in whatever this is. So let's see what this, what deck is this? Spellcasting Oracle, there we go. Let's look at the Spellcasting Oracle. We have love, we have family. Focus on your family right now. Yeah, so if this is a younger person in your family, pay attention to them. Don't allow anything bad to happen. Make sure that you're being very keen on who that person's friends are, whatever. At least just for this month. Uh, you could be traveling. Maybe you're going on vacation. Don't let your kid out of your sight kind of thing. Be aware of someone, you know, coming up and saying, oh, hey, how are you? No, don't, don't fuck with that. Um... With love and family, this is the Ten of Pentacles as well. Okay, you're happy with your family. You're happy with your family dynamic. So what is going on with this? I have the Witch's Familiar Oracle set. So I have Brownie Protection. Yeah, that's exactly what I was saying right here. Protection. This is all about protecting. Like, walking away from vices... Allowing yourself to not be too cool for school, getting your degrees, getting your life in order, or at least attaining some sort of mastery within your life. This is you going back to school. You illuminating the darkness right here, seeing that there is something not quite right. Like, 
you're seeing the intentions of something all of a sudden, like the sun is rising and you're saying, hey, that looked okay in the dark, but all of a sudden now it's like, oh, that's the cliff. I'm walking off a cliff. And you're like thanking God that the sun came up just in time before you walked off that cliff, right? That's what this is. So pay attention to what's going on within your life right here. Focus on the things that are going to bring you some sort of stability. Protect those things. Protect the things that are small projects in your life. Because I do see that by you nurturing those small projects, that's ultimately what leads you to your star. Whatever it is. Now, I don't know everyone's life path. Every Aquarian is going to be different. Some people are going to watch this from their sun, their moon, their rising, their 10th house, their Pluto, whatever, right? Well, if you watch it from your Pluto, you'd probably be over like 300 years old. But anyway, yeah, people could be watching it from their Pluto. I don't know everyone. So... We have survival. Lizard survival. Hmm. I don't really know much about this. Like, it's so, like, polar opposite energy. Ensuring something survival. That could be that energy. Ensuring, doing whatever you have to do to ensure some sort of project. So even if you're working, like, a good job and you got fired, well, if you want to have your family to stay together, it's kind of like maybe you have to go and do something that's kind of tedious and hard like going and paving a road ensuring survival it's not very nice but it's something that you have to do but i feel like it works out for you even if you have to do something that you don't want to do right here aquarius i do see that it's okay so let's look at this right here let's get you a couple of halloween oracle cards i usually only use this deck during halloween however i don't know just feel like I should do it. We have the Skull of Light Illumination. Yeah, that's definitely... Something is being illuminated to you. Something bad, too. But it's okay, because you're going to have the wherewithal, the foresight, and you're going to be like, oh, I see this now. And the ghost, regret. Hmm. Don't be regretful by this situation. You might regret something if you don't see it up front. Maybe you need to see something like right now. Um, let me get you a couple of rune cards. Now, I've said this before. I do not know how to pronounce these, but I'm going to show you them. You can write them down. You can look at them. So what is this ghost regret? What is this devil energy? Something is like you're complacent about something, but you don't need to be. You have to like pay attention really closely during this month to everything. It's very important during this month that you pay attention. You have Pertho, Secret, Chance, Gambling, Secrets, Windfall, Synchronicity, Birth. The spiritual meaning, Fate, the Feminine, and Uncertainty. Don't just leave things up to chance right here. Oh, oh, this card just, oh my gosh. Is that the devil? The Hermit. I just knocked my cards over and I found the Hermit on the ground. So definitely a secret is being illuminated to you because here's the thing about the Hermit. The Hermit carries the Lantern of Illumination. If you look at the card, the Hermit, like on the traditional deck, you'll see that he carries the light of the sun inside of his lantern or a little star. That is the secret to something. So you could be coming into contact with the ghost right here because the ghost, here's the thing, the Hermit can be represented by two different things. A ghost, like an actual, like someone who's dead. And it can also be represented as like a master mason. All right, someone who works in like secret societies. Someone who's very old, knows all the secrets, knows everything about it, knows ins and outs of secret society. So you're being illuminated to something right here. Now, a ghost could be coming and speaking to you about some sort of regret. Pay attention to that. If you get visited by a ghost, if something slams in in your house, whatever, pay attention. You have one, Joe. Joy and happiness, harmony and partnerships, positive family relationships, and good teamwork. I feel like a ghost is going to illuminate something to you at the right time. Um, I don't want to leave it right here because... I know that everyone's different. I'm gonna get you a couple of awaken cards. And every secret's gonna be different, but I feel like you just have to pay attention to something like, uh, let's see. We have embrace, embrace your family, ceremony. Embrace is ceremony. Hmm, might be going to church. That's also a ceremony, pray. Seek guidance, maybe from one of your ancestors, okay? Maybe you're praying at a church and uh, 
you know, people always talk about maybe an ancestor will help guide them. Pay attention to that. It could be someone that you miss. It could be a parent. It could be a grandparent. Whatever this is, you're paying attention to that. I feel like this person will guide you if you seek help. One more card. The intent. <clears throat> if you have a ceremony right here, focus on your intentions, all right? And see the intent of other people. Because you have to understand that the oyster really doesn't know what he's doing with the sand. All he knows that is if he uses his mucus and collects the sand, it'll harden and become a pearl, right? So that's the symbology behind this. So pay attention to other people's intent and focus on your own intentions. Like what can you do with a bunch of sand? Well, you can turn it into something right here. Don't be regretful. I'm gonna pull from this deck right here. I want to know about this secret. What is going on? It's like devils. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on. Have the Wheel of Fortune coming out. We have the devil. Hmm. There is a secret. There is something about the devil right here. Spinning away from the devil into something else because that's what the Wheel of Fortune represents. Spinning away from a toxic cycle into a new cycle. What goes down must come up and what comes up must go down. That's the ebb and flow of eternity with the Wheel of Fortune. Just because you're going to have good times within your life doesn't mean you won't have bad times within your life. Six of Swords. So I do see that you're walking away from the devil for victory, okay? So you're going to be illuminated at the right time. The Prince of Skulls. You're going to be illuminated about something right here. You're going to see something that is like, I did not know that. It has to it could potentially do with money. You're walking away from something before things get too bad. You're protected. You're trying to protect a situation. Just pay attention to what goes on. The high priestess. Yeah. High priestess sits at the pillars of masculine and feminine energy. She's originally called the popus for those of you who don't know. The Popus was a mockery card. That's why they didn't like the Major Arcana and the Terra. If you look at the Major Arcana or the Minor Arcana, it's the same as a 52 playing card deck, right? So they took away the um, Priestess. Well, they took away the Pages because those were kind of like dirty cards. They were taboo. They took away um, the Priest or the Major Arcana and they took away something else. Anyway, so this is someone who sits at the same level as the Pope, but it's a mockery to the Pope because there's never been a popess, because that was originally her name. The Hierophant was called the Pope. The Priestess is called the Popus, right? But it's a blending of both energies together that you have to take masculine and you have to take feminine. They're both equal to one another, all right? So whether it's the shadow path, the left-hand path, or the light path, they work in tandem with one another. So this could be about your ego along with your higher thought being blended together. This could also represent that you have to understand that if you want to practice light magic, you have to use shadow magic and vice versa. They go hand in hand. If you want to be a practitioner of something, you have to take the necessary precautions. Okay, I've talked about this in a different video. <sighs> Gosh, I don't know if I want to go through it again. Basically, if you're going to cast magic, if you're going to play with something that's dangerous, like remember all magic comes or all science comes from the idea of magic. All right, all science does. Even mathematics comes from people getting really high and seeing things and being like, oh my gosh, I wanna plot these points. So that's what you have to understand right there is that no matter what it is, whether it's science or whether it's magic, there has to be that level of protection. So even if you're playing with black magic, you have to use light magic. If you're using light magic, you have to use black magic. It, that's the whole point of the high priestess. Hold on, let me show you. Oh, that's funny. The hermit's falling out over the high priestess right here. That's the hermit illuminating the situation for you. It doesn't matter what path you take within your life. They both lead to the same place in the end, right? That's the level of enlightenment. So whether it's through light magic, black magic, with the shadow path, the light path, whether it's self-serving or whether it's through humanitarian work, if you choose a self-serving path, you're going to have to do humanitarian work on on the side. If you choose a humanitarian path, which is what Aquarius rules because it's masculine energy, you still have to do shadow work at the same time. Aquarians highly evolved. Um, Aquarians do things for the 
collective of humanity. Leos do things kind of for themselves, even though they're both masculine energy, if that makes sense. So I sh want, want you to see this. Hold on, there's the fucking glare. There's the lantern with the star. There's the black or the white pillar with the black J, the black pillar with the white B. She holds the cross, the Torah, and the crescent moon of Islam at her feet. She has the three moons above her head. So she is kind of like the shadow path to the Pope because she is the feminine energy to the Pope, okay? The Pope is the masculine energy, even though it's funny because it's actually ruled by Taurus, which is a feminine sign, whatever. Um, you get the picture. You have to have some sort of blending harmonious right here. Can't be too masculine, can't be too feminine. It has to be like at this perfect thing. Whatever you're trying to create, whatever you're trying to structure right here, be aware of that. That's a secret. Maybe you practice magic. Maybe you're in science right here. You can't just rush off and do science without having the proper protective gear, right? A lot of people will be like, why are you putting on that mask for, um, you know, when you're playing with formaldehyde? Well, there's a fucking reason that you put on a mask and you put on gloves when you play with formaldehyde. Like, don't be stupid. Like, just because someone else decides to put their hand in the mercury pit doesn't mean you have to do that. You should take the necessary precautions, even if they're like, that's stupid, why do you have to do that? Well, obviously, you don't want fucking mercury poisoning. So, anyway, that's what I'm seeing for you. Take the necessary precautions if you're going to play with something dangerous, and vice versa, right? So, I hope you enjoyed this reading, Aquarius. This is a long reading, and um, I'll see you later.